Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me word for word, verse by verse of what we're going to be looking at and considering today. Please read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me because um, my brain will go quicker than my mouth sometimes and vice versa. <laughs> okay? So read along with me. Read along with me. Okay? We're going to begin today in Luke chapter 6, verses 43 on to verse 45 to begin. Because it's going to set the tone. We are going to today be talking about fornication and adultery as defined by scripture we're also going to be looking at the dictatorial um, definitions of these words but as I recommend and use Webster's 1828 dictionary or any dictionary well that's the only one I use so but when I use a dictionary I especially when it comes to scriptural words I will use scripture first then my Strong's Concordance to first mention and then go to Webster's afterward, okay? But Luke chapter 6, verses 43 on to verse 44. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs. Nor of a bramble bush, uh, get, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Now, verse forty-four there, um, thorns uh, that choked the word, and the bramble, the bramble bush. I think of um, the uh, the parable of oh, where ah Ahimelech in the book of Judges. Um, you know, where um, I can't I can't offhand, but right away I think of Ahimelech in the book uh, book of Judges. You can look that up on your own. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And then when you look in Luke chapter 12, verse 34, just one verse, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now you might be thinking, what does that have to do with fornication and adultery? Fornication and adultery are very self-centered, self-serving things. And we're going to see today in scripture and also in dictatorial definition that both fornication and adultery have two folds to themselves. And we're going to see this. There is obviously the physical side of both fornication and adultery. But there is also a spiritual aspect to both fornication and adultery. And we're going to examine that a little bit today, okay? Please turn with me in to 2 Chronicles chapter 21. 2 Chronicles chapter 21. We're going to be looking at verses 8 on to verse 11, okay? Now this is in regard... This is in regard to King Jehoram, or Jehoram, okay? Jehoram. Verses 8 on to verse 11 in Second Chronicles chapter 21. In his days, whose days? Joram. The Edomites, Esau, revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him in, and the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. 
The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken, now look at this, the Lord God of his fathers, okay? Forsaken the Lord God of his fathers, okay? Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. Now that is the first appearance of any uh, uh, variation of the word fornicate. And the word fornicate is not in scripture. Fornication is. Okay? Now look at this context. Okay, Now we have to also remember Baalite, Baalism, which is modern Roman Catholicism, had a sexual, perverse sexual connotation to it, such as sodomy, okay, the sodomite priest, you know, the, the with the Catholics, how they're molesting uh, boys, okay, that is all derived from the Baalite religion with the, with the um, temple and stuff like that, it, it's very grotesque, okay, so you can weave that into the very first appearance of fornication, knowing that, okay, Baalite-ism was very perverse, okay, Baalism was very perverse, and it had a perversion of a sexual nature, yes it did, but this very first appearance of the word fornication, okay, look at that context in verses 10 and 11, so the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day, the same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. The Lord God of his fathers. First, there was a forsaking. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, high places making towers to reach unto heaven, okay? And caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. And look in Exodus 32. This was, this was brought to me this morning as uh, the structuring of this was being put together. Exodus 32, verses 1 under verse 4. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, they saw. Notice that. Notice that. Because they didn't readily see Moses. Totally different dispensation. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay? Yes, but let's continue. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Look at this. Look at this. Okay? Now notice that con that context in first uh, second chronicles twenty one, verse ten, where it says because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Up, make us little g gods. Plural. But yet, Aaron makes what? A singular calf. Mm. Wow, huh? That's a totally different story. But let's continue. Up, make us gods. Which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what, what not, what is become of him? And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, golden earrings, tangible, worldly, gold, lustrous things, okay, which are in the ears of your wives, from the wives, of course, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them on to me. And all the people break off the golden earrings with earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a, look at this, a molten calf, singular, okay? And they said, 
thee, and they said, these be thy gods, plural. Oh boy, we can go in so many directions with that, can't we? That's a little wabbit. You go ahead and gnaw on that yourself. But we're just going to leave that at that because we got quite a bit we're going to go over today. Okay? These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. A uh, singular calf, but yet referred to as gods. Mm, interesting! And it's paganistic and God hates it because if you continue reading, yeah, yeah, you Trinitarians chew on that for a little while. Okay? All right? Now go back to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 21. Okay? Verse 10 again and 11. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. And in James we read that every man is led away by his lusts. Okay? And when you give yourself over onto the enticement of your lusts and put them into a physical action, that's when you get problems. It is not a sin to be tempted. Temptation in and of itself is not a sin. You do what Oscar Wilde says, or you justify it as the sleazy believists do, and act on it, that's when you have the problems. So we see here that fornication, physical and spiritual, begins where? where? With a forsaking of what? Hmm. Isaiah 23. Isaiah 23. Verses, not 43, Brad. Isaiah 23, verses 14 on to verse 18. And you know, think about, again, idolatry is just an extension of what? Doing what you want to do, what makes you feel good because you are your own God, okay? Your own divider, your own, you know, all things are awful for you. We're going to look at that today, but isn't that interesting? Isaiah 23, verses 14 on to verse 18. Isaiah 23, not 22. Howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Mm. Take an harp. Go about the city, thou harlot. Don't, don't miss that reference to the harlot. And, and remember to cross-reference with this uh, Tyre and stuff like that. Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay? Take an harp. Go about the city, thou harlot that has been forgotten. Make sweet melodies, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass, after the end of seventy years, that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up. It shall not be treasured nor laid up. For her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiency, sufficiently and for durable clothing. Hmm. Fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Now, in that context, is that fornication a physical fornication? You can liken it so that it will be the resulting end thereof, but where does it start first? In a spiritual sense. 
okay, in a very spiritual sense. Ezekiel 16 now. Ezekiel 16, okay? Ezekiel 16, verses 22 on to verse 29. Okay? And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare, and wast polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass, after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. Now you think about this so far in context of idolatry. Okay? Okay? Thou hast built thy high place at the head of every way, Look at verse 24 and 25 thus far. That thou, I will, <laughs> built unto thee, I will, an eminent place, and made thee, I will, an high place in every street. Thou hast built, I will, <laughs> thy high place at the head of every way, and hast made thy beauty, I will, <laughs> to be abhorred. And hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Now again, we see these references of opening thy feet. Okay, <laughs> all right. And stuff like that, and um, how they've built themselves high places. When you in departing from the Lord, okay, all right, departing from the Lord, you run into all kinds of problems, okay, all kinds of problems. Let's keep continue reading, reading, okay. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee and have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy own, ashamed of thy lewd way. And it's very interesting that a lot of what is called Christianity today, that other things such as atheism, uh, Islam, and Buddhists, and Hinduism, uh, will look at the modern Christian and what they justify as good, and even they will be like, how can you guys say that's, you know, Satan has done his work. Well, verse 28, Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable, couldn't be satisfied. And see, when you make the decision to go after whatever it is that you are putting in front of the Lord, okay, it's never enough, is it? See, the Lord satisfies us with morsels of meat, with morsels of bread that come from His Word. But when you start looking outside of that, hmm, yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. See, unsatiable, uh, be satisfied. Sin, when you keep when you keep indulging in sin, it's like a drug. You got to keep doing it, doing it, and doing it, and doing it, and doing it because it never satisfies you, does it? Does it? Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan, unto the Chaldea, unto Chaldea. Cal de Caldi Caldea Caldi uh, and yet thou wast not satisfied therewith. We gotta read verse uh, thirty. How weak is thine heart? 
and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, imperious, whorish woman. How weak is thy heart? Now, check this out. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 and 32. This is, now this is interesting, because there are some out there who might want to, and I have seen Christians equating fornication and adultery as the same thing. Now, in the physical, actual aspect, there is a similarity. But there are two different things. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 on to verse 32, check this out. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his, his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, pay attention, causeth her to commit adultery. Hmm. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Now here you have an unescapable thing. You see fornication and adultery within the same verse. Now, are they the same thing? In this, especially in this context. No, they are not. How could they be? How could they be? Okay, ah, wait. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Verses 3 on to verse 9. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he may have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them non binary? <laughs> Help it. Ah, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Okay? There's only two genders, you twits. Okay? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife they twain shall be one flesh. Twofold. Twofold. The marriage bed and also in a spiritual sense. Okay? One flesh, yes, but it is obviously, yes, a physical connotation. Absolutely. No one's denying that. But to relegate it just to that as not being a spiritual aspect as well onto it is ludicrous. And see, when you do something like that and try to relegate it only to the one while ignoring the other, what are you trying to justify and get away with? That's the question that you need to ask. Okay? Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, not, let not man put asunder. Let not man. When God is the author, not us making stupid decisions, okay? Making really horrible decisions, trying to put something together. When God is the author of it, we ought not to be the ones to interfere with it. Okay? Verse 7. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Where's your treasure? 
he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Now, let's shift a little bit. Adultery. Okay? And adultery in Scripture. The very first appearance of the word adultery. Okay? Of any variation. There's actually quite a few. Uh, this one is we're going to be very minimal on because it's this one is actually a bit more simply defined in Scripture. Okay? Ready? Exodus 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay? That's one of the Ten Commandments. Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20. Verse 10. One verse. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife. Aha. First references. Look this up yourself. Okay? First references. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, physical, physical connotation first. Okay, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. What's interesting to note that I found doing this was when you look at fornication and the way it is used in first, uh, utilized in first mention, yes, you can weave the physical within to that. Absolutely. But it, it, it seems to be that the connotation is first in the spiritual before it is in the physical. Whereas adultery, straight out the gate, straight out the gate, it's the physical. I find that very interesting. But then you might be saying, well, is there a spiritual, like spiritual adultery? Oh, absolutely. But, oh, absolutely. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Okay? Proverbs 6, verses 20 on to verse 23. Okay? Like I said, when looking into this, fornication, yes, is physical. But when it comes to first reference, first uh, mention, there appears to be, first of all, the spiritual and then the physical. Whereas adultery, as going off of first mention, is right away physical. But there is also a spiritual aspect to it. My son... Proverbs 6, 20 on verse 33. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. Hmm. He who trusts in his heart is a fool and the thorns and snares. Hmm. Hmm. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is life, light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman. I'll give you 50 guesses of a good reference you can go to about who this evil woman may in fact be. Those of you who watch any of this stuff, you know exactly. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thine heart. The visual stimuli. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, 
a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress, the adulteress, will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire into his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whoso, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Now see, hold up. Okay, we see here first about the admonition to stay in Scripture for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? And when you forsake that, you, you are more tempted to be taken by the evil woman with flatteries. And isn't it a coincidence not that the very next proverb is proverb 7, which is talking about a certain woman who is on every corner, at every street, and today is at, behind this plastic screen of yours, on that tablet or health phone of yours. Okay? So we see the addition here of also a spiritual aspect to adultery. Okay? Okay? But interestingly enough, as our Lord says, if you look upon a maid and lust after her in your heart, you have already committed adultery. But yet it wasn't physical. But you're doing it up here! Okay? Okay? Hmm. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Okay? Now, the, the comparison. But, see, you steal something, you can repay that in time. <laughs> a lot more pronounced, but in time. However, but whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding departing from evil. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Dispensational difference here. Dispensational difference here. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Now, there ain't any sin that will not, cannot be forgiven today. The unpardonable thing does not apply for us today in this dispensation. It doesn't matter your sin. The Lord can and will forgive you if you come to him on his terms. You don't boot the door out of the way and go any willy-nilly way that you want. It doesn't work like that. That's what makes so many false converts. And that's what's sending so many, that's what is sending so many people to hell. Okay? I, for the Lord saved me, was the other man in an adulterous relationship. I was that other man. I had a part in destroying the marriage. And people, it's like, well, Brad, it would have been someone. That is not the point. It wasn't. It was me. And that man, whose wife I defiled because of what I did, I believe, looking back in retrospect, I believe that man was a saint, is a saint. And if he were to harbor a grudge against me, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. Because when, when that adultery is there, the physical, there's, there's hardly coming back from that. This is, this is why... The Lord doesn't want us fornicating. Because when the Lord brings man and woman together in the marriage bed, okay, you're each other's firsts. Hence, that mental thing of comparison isn't there. Okay? Right? Adult, and there are other, I mean... Like I said, we can. There, I wrote down some other things about adultery here that we could look at. 
Okay, and, and let's do that. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 9. They say if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed, like most Christians. Except when they get caught, not the fact that they've actually done evil. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, After she hath done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. So see, in this context, yes, the physical is there, but also we see it with the spiritual connotation as well. Okay? As well. Like the Lord said, you look on a woman and you think up here, you, you know, you've already committed adultery with her. And that's something... And that's something. And in Jeremiah 7, verses 8 on to verse 10. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery? And swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal? 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 And walk after other gods whom ye know relational not. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Hmm. So we see fornication, physical, yes, begins with the spiritual. Adultery, scripturally, is physical, but also encompasses a spiritual aspect. But, you know, and what we have read thus far, have you noticed anything? Now, you saints, well, um, those of you who are not saints of the Church of the Living God, you'll be like, okay, what, what are you getting at? You know, in Matthew 5, okay, uh, and 19, all right, what is that before? And see, what we just looked at in uh, uh, Jeremiah about going after false gods and whatnot, uh, go to John chapter 8. Go to John chapter 8, verses 30 on to verse 44. We've covered this before, but we're going to cover it again. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Okay? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, 
Then are ye my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Now sayest thou, ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whoso committeth sin is the servant, choice, making choice, you have free will, of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, physically. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. Ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Note the capital F and the lowercase f there. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Look at the justification now that they're doing. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they on, then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. Fornication. Now we have seen adultery is in a context of a mar of a marriage, of a wife and a husband. And fornication. Hmm. We're seeing the difference here. Okay. But see, that is the other aspect of fornication, the spiritual aspect of it. Okay? We have one Father, even God. Do they? Do they? And note that capital F there. Okay? But yet, look at the justification that they have already implemented. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me. For I proceed, proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Here it is. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And then look down at verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? <laughs> Many believed on him, but justifying self, justifying self, justifying self. And then they turn it back and accuse the very one that they believed on, supposedly. Have you noticed anything? The, these references of fornication that we have seen thus far are where? Before the death, burial, and resurrection. That is a significant thing. That is very significant. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 3. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 23. Uh, excuse me. Jeremiah 3, not 23. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3, verses 12 on to verse 15. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep, my, keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. Look at that. For I am married unto you. You know the word backsliding only appears in the Old Testament? Now, the idea of backsliding as someone who messes up is there, 
But we see backsliding scripturally in the Old Testament. The connotation is different. Why is that? Because under the law, there was no eternal security. The Lord himself was not a permanent resident in any believer in the Old Testament. That is specific for this dispensation and the 144,000 Hebraic Jews, not Hamites or Japhethites, during the time of Jacob's trouble. So that is very interesting to note when it comes to the thing of backsliding. Remember, the scripture is our standard. Okay, Remember that, brother. Let's read that again. Turn, O backsliding children, and sat the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So, the Lord said, I am married unto you. But see, under the law, eternal security wasn't. Hmm. Very interesting. Very, at Exodus chapter 6, Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 8. Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 8. Okay. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see, Now shalt thou see what I will do unto Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of, the, of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them. To give them the land of Canaan, a land of the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt. And I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the, burden of the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. Now see, the promise that God made unto Abraham had no condition, but the promise about keeping the land did. Obvious. Okay? Two different aspects. Very interesting. Now you go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 10. But ye did cleave unto the Lord your God, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Hmm? Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. See, God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Establish the Hebraic line. The promises of Abraham are always there, but the land promise, okay, even though Israel is there, had conditions to it. Okay? You gotta remember that, different dispensation. Okay? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all these thi in all things that we call upon him for? 
And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Keep thy soul diligently. Different dispensation. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. See, the Lord had said in Jeremiah chapter 3, I'm Mary unto you. But see, eternal security, the Lord dwelling within them at this dispensation was not there. Why is that significant? Well, simple. Very simple, actually, why is that significant? Because, like I said, eternal security is not there. Once saved, always saved, is not there in this dispensation. The Lord can come and go, come and go, come and go. So, how does a married individual commit physical fornication? They can commit spiritual fornication in what? departing from the Lord. But the actual physical fornication cannot happen today, especially in the same... Why? Because the Lord lives within them. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Now, go to Jeremiah 32, verses 30 on to verse 33. Jeremiah 32, verses 30 on to verse 33. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord, for this city hath been to me a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it, even unto this day, that I should remove it from before my face. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back, not the face, though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them. Yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. And then when you read in Ezekiel chapter 16, again, just one verse, verse 8, verse 8, Now, when I passed by thee, and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into covenant with thee, saith the Lord God. And thou becamest mine. Hmm. 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 And then in Isaiah chapter 54, Isaiah chapter 54, one verse. Verse 5, For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. And then when you read in Romans chapter 11, in context, uh, speaking of the Jews, in Romans chapter 11, verse 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. See, Israel is, is always going to be the apple of God's eye. Okay? But see, under the dispensation of the law where eternal security wasn't there. Okay? But see, for today, go to 2 Corinthians now, chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 4. Today, there's a different dynamic. Okay? We today as saints, we today as saints, we have the Lord within us, okay? 
We have the Lord living within us on a permanent basis. Okay? Okay? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, <laughs> in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. Hmm. Okay, oh, oh, one, one, one second, please. Now, 2 Corinthians 11. I wrote down the wrong thing again, but that was meat. That was meat. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon for that, but it was meat. Would to God ye would... Oh, wow, that was meat. <laughs> would to God ye should bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you, espoused you, one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ you know I was thinking that was a mess up but you got something going on praise you <laughs> but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his salty you have got set so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, lowercase l's, s, which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Mm. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verses 21 on to verse 33. Ephesians 5, 21 on to verse 23. Submitting yourselves one, another, one to another in the fear of God. Yes, the fear of God. Paul never talked about the fear of God. We just saw it. Okay. Why? Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church, the body, is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in some things, in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it, sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by your feelings, by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not a building. Not, ha not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Because the twain two are one flesh, both physically and spiritually. See? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Right here. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. 
but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Today, we as saints, the Lord lives within us. Okay? The Lord lives within us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you and I, in a spiritual sense, when we choose that which is not of the Lord, in a spiritual sense, is that an adultery? When, how, I mean, what more of a union can you get with Christ today than the Father living within you? Okay? Think about that. Now, after the death, burial, and resurrection, after the death, burial, and resurrection, Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15, okay, Acts chapter 15, we want verses 20 on to verse 29. Now this is after the Jerusalem conference where everyone came out of that preaching what Paul preaches, okay? All right? And the question about, you know, what do we send these other churches' bodies? And our dear brother James who struggled, and you read about this in Acts chapter 21, which we're going to make a quick, quick reference uh, there today. Uh, our dear brother James kind of did struggle with the us and them kind of mentality. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath him in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the, the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Socia. For as much as we have heard that certain when written, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment people like mark the messenger today who claim to be a, of a saint saved he's not but he's trying to get you under the law to keep the law got to keep that no and this is in the chapter where they address that okay they're saying look these guys are saying uh, saying they are of us, but yet they want you to go into the law. You can know that by the uh, circumcising. Okay? It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, Catholic, and from things strangled, and from fornication, which from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And of course, there are other appearances of fornication after the death, burial, and resurrection within the Pauline epistles, which we are not going to touch on because I do not believe we need to. Romans chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 32. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. Look at what's mentioned second. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Hmm. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9. On to verse 18. Fornication. Fornication. Has two aspects, as does adultery. Spiritual and physical. As we have seen with adultery, first references, first appearances are of a, fear, as a physical nature, okay? But also encompasses spiritual. While, as I believe we, are, we have seen, fornication, which encompasses the physical, but begins also with the spiritual. And both of these, you can say, well, they both begin, yes, enticed with lust. Yes, you're right. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God spiritually? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, look at that tie-in, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, men who act like women, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, reference to sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, who the Lord abhorreth, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God spiritual. And before you start saying, well, if we do any of those things as saints, well, I... Uh, Romans chapter 7. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the capital S spirit of our God. Which is in the saint. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. I will not be brought under the power of any. I'm going to say this right here, right now. You as a saint seek to do things that are sanctified by Rome and call them good because you all things are lawful to you. If you're a saint, you're committing adultery. Physically, no. Spiritually, amen. Meats for the belly. And the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. But for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Ah. But see, someone who isn't a saint. Who they are their own God. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ 
and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Look at this verse. Look at this verse. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Revelation 17. Revelation 17. That specific reference there. Very interesting. Revelation 17, verses 1 on to verse 6. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. You know how a saint can act foolish? but not being a fool, because the fool says in his heart, there is no God except themselves. Okay? Keep that in mind. Because you might be uh, scratching your head about this. Okay? We, as saints, can behave as if a fornicator, but not actually be or something. I don't know how the dynamic of that really can work in that context, but what we're looking at speaks for itself, and that's what we need to concentrate on. And hey, leave your comments in the, co in the comments section. Send me your emails. I'm sure I'll get a few, okay? And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And this is during the time of Jacob's trouble where it is faith and works. Okay? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she carried, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Rome. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Adultery. But you know what I want us to look at first? Adulterate. I, I did not check if adulterate um, is in the scripture, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But look at this. Look at this. Adulterate. Adultery. Now, I did not check the scriptures to see if adulterate. Uh, you know what? Before we continue. All right. I just checked to see if adulterate was in the scriptures. Didn't see it. But look at this. Adulterate. To corrupt, debase, or make impure by an admixture of baser materials as to adulterate liquors or the coin of a country. 
mixing. Ah, that's interesting, isn't it? Now, adultery. From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Violation of the marriage bed. A crime or a civil injury which introduces or may introduce into a family a spurious offspring. By the laws of Connecticut, the sexual intercourse of any man with a married woman in the crime of adultery in both, such intercourse of a married man with an unmarried woman is fornication in both. An adultery of the man within the meaning of the law respecting divorce, but not a felonious adultery in either, or the crime of adultery at common law, or by statute. This latter offense is, in England, proceeded with only in the ecclesiastical courts. In common usage, adultery means the unfaithfulness of any married person to the marriage bed. In England, Parliament grants absolute divorces for infidelity to the marriage bed in either party, and the spiritual courts divorce a mensa, and I'm going to try to pronounce that. In a scriptural sense, all manner of lewdness or unchastity as in the seventh commandment. In scripture, idolatry or apostasy from the true God. In old laws, the fine and pen penalty, the fine and penalty imposed for the offense of adultery. In ecclesiastical affairs, the intrusion of a person into a bishopric during the life of, a, of the bishop. And finally, among ancient naturalists, the grafting of trees was called adultery, being considered as an unnatural union. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Okay? But see, we read in Matthew 5 and 19 a distinction between the two. Okay? The distinction of the two. Ah, here, we were closer to uh, Matthew 19. And what was that verse? Uh, verses 3 on to verse 9 and 19. Okay. Verse 9. All right. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. And you read in, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, okay, about marriage in context for us today, especially doctrinally for us today. Does this mean anything for us today for our instruction and righteousness? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Because people will say, well, they say, well, for fornication, uh, divorce is okay. But wait a minute, and then they tie in adultery into that fornication. And fornication does have a physical uh, attribute to it. Yes, it does. But this is specific. I say, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. And shall marry another committeth adultery. Are they the same thing here? How could they be? How could they be? Okay? And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. Hmm. Now, we saw what adultery is. And like I said, that thing, I like that adulterate. To corrupt, debase, or make impure by an admixture. Huh. Huh. Fornicate. As our beloved Mr. Webster gives us. Fornication. Fornicate and fornication. Because, like I said, fornicate is not in, uh, the singular is not in, in there. Okay, so hold on, I'm looking for it. Okay. 
All right, fornicate from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Fornicate, to commit lewdness as an unmarried woman, unmarried woman, uh, excuse me, to commit lewdness as an unmarried man or woman or as a unmarried man with an unmarried woman. Okay? Fornication. The incontinence or lewdness of unmarried persons, male or female. Also the criminal con conversation of a married man with an unmarried woman. Ah. Two. Adultery. Three. Incest. See, now here, Webster is liking them in a similar fashion. And yes, adultery can be involved with fornication and vice versa. Yes, but in and of themselves, as we have already seen, they are two different things, but one can encompass the other. Okay? Number four here. Idolatry. A uh, a forsaking of the true God and worshiping of idols. And he gives here Second Chronicles chapter 21, which we already looked at. And Revelation uh, 19. Five. And arching the forming of a vault. Hmm. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. And then, of course, a fornicator, uh, an unmarried person, male or female, who has criminal conversation with the other sex. Also, a married man who has sexual commerce with an unmarried woman. And it says, see, adultery. A lewd person. An idolater. Fornicator such as Esau. Okay. So, we see that Mr. Webster makes that distinction. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, that is going to be it for this little video. Okay? That's going to be it for this little video. The, the rest of whatever may come to you, you, you look this up on your, your own time. Okay, and may the Lord lead you and guide you on this, okay? But I just wanted to get this little video out there to show you that there is a difference between the two. There is a very big difference between the two. And you have to wonder within yourself, dear brother, dear sister, are you behaving as a fornicator? An idolatry? And what does Christianity offer you? Thank you so much for watching. If you do, this took less than I thought it was going to. I'm going to get this uploaded. Like I said, uh, leave comments. Uh, there are emails. Go ahead. Uh, leave this open so you can, you know, uh, we can uh, converse on this and stuff like that. And I'm sure I will receive it. So. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, please keep us in your prayers, brethren. Things are getting really rough around here. Very, very rough around here. So uh, please keep us in your prayers. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.